Hey, what's going on guys? This is uh, JD Moon and I'm coming at you guys with another build video here real quick. Um, so I've had a lot of people in the stream ask me, you know, like, what am I running? What are the sets? Things like that. Um, basically, it's it's just the trainer build all over again. Uh, I really, really like this build. It's a lot of fun um, and it puts out a lot of damage. So what I want to do in this build video is I kind of want to go over sets, um, skills, you know, food, all that good stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and nice loading screen. Uh, let's go ahead and just dive into it real quick and I will show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at gear, um, how I have my gear set up. So I'm running two pieces of blood spawn, both heavy, in pin, uh, as well as an in pin chest. I have uh, an in pin legs and in pin boots. So it's seven heavy. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, five, one, one, five heavy, uh, one medium, one light. All of these are going to be in pin, okay? Um, I do have medium gloves of trainee bracers, and uh, that is in pin as well as a light sash of trainee, also in pin. Uh, now for my jewelry, um, I was running one uh, jewelry glyph on this here. Uh, I do have a trainee neck with uh, two uh, rings of rattle cage okay um, because we are running rattle cage and trainee and um, on the rings and the neck I'm running all three reduced cost I've just been finding that to be a lot more sustained I really really like that I was running one um, damage enchant uh, but I know for most of you guys out there it's gonna be a lot of uh, it's gonna be really hard to manage your resources like that um, so I went ahead and changed it because there were times where I was having a problem sustaining um, just because like if I if I get like uh, say some kind of poison on me or some stupid shit it, it becomes really really micromanage like micromanaging your resources so I just went ahead and put the three reduced costs it works really well for me um, but if you want to go one damage uh, you definitely can it hits a lot harder um, but the amount of damage I was getting versus the amount of sustain, I just felt like through reduced cost is just it's just all around better in my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and look at weapons. Uh, what I'm running for weapons is I'm running a Nernhone sword with a sharpened sword. Both of these are trainee. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the named weapons of trainee, you can get a Jakarn's machete that is sharpened. Um, and then you can just get any training sword and you'll have to transmute it to Nernhone. Um, so if you guys don't have the Nernhone trait researched and you can't trait change to Nernhone, uh, what you can do is you can go ahead and get a charged, I'm sorry, not a charged, a infused weapon of trainee with a berserker glyph on it and it hits just about as hard as training. I'm, I'm sorry, as Nernhone. Um, now, another option for you guys as well is if you wanted to run some extra jewelry damage, uh, you could run two charged weapons um, and run a flame damage on one and a poison damage on the other. And what that's going to do is that's going to give you basically the status effect all the time. So it's always going to proc the status effect um, while increasing your sustain. Um, so that's going to be with the passives here. I'll show you the passive real quick if you guys aren't familiar with it um, It is this one right here uh, Increases the chance of burning or the poison status effect by 50% um, While also applying I'm sorry whenever you apply that uh, it gives you 500 magicka or 500 stamina So if you're having issues sustaining by all means just run two charged or you could run a Nernhone and a charged with uh, burning on the you know the flame damage on the charged and you'll always be getting that additional sustain every five seconds so that's just something to think about it's it's really good um now for my weapon enchants uh, oh well here we'll go with traits real quick on jewelry because i'm sure some of you guys are wondering what i'm running um for traits i'm still running the max magica i I mean, I see no reason to change Arcane. Um, if you want to go ahead and gold these out, these this jewelry, you're welcome to. Um, I just haven't really done it yet. Um, I, I like gold armor at all times just because it's, it's really noticeable having the gold armor. So, I mean, it's really hard for me to play without gold armor. Um, now, for the weapon 
enchants. I'm running a flame enchant on my Nernhone weapon uh, because that's increasing my ability to get my sustain. Um, so I like this better. It just increases your chance of applying the burning effect. So it's going to increase your chances of getting that extra sustain every five seconds. So this is, it's going to be pretty important to try and get that proc as much as possible. Um, now on my offhand, I'm running the crusher enchant. This is going to just increase our damage all around. Um, it's a really good enchant to run. I like it on my offhand. I don't suggest main handing it. Uh, if you want to run Berserker, you could. That's fine. Um, but that's also why I, why I run Dual Wield over uh, Two Hand is because it gives me, not only does it give me two traits, um, but it also gives me two enchants. So I like Dual Wield better than Two Hand or a Staff. One, I think Staff is just butt cheeks. I, I don't like Staff at all. I don't like the play style. So I just don't even run it. Um, now, moving to the back bar, I'm running a King's Guard Hammer Decisive. I really like Decisive on the back bar. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, pardon me. It's really, really good uh, alt gen, uh, especially when you're hitting uh, Cauterize. Okay, so if you're healing somebody, um, you're getting additional, you know, ultimate. So it's really nice to get that alt regen, you know, getting the chance of getting an additional one ultimate. And it is noticeable too. So if you're running, uh, if you haven't ran decisive on the back bar, you'll definitely notice it. Now, as far as the enchant goes for back bar, I don't really care. Um, I just keep the basic one that's on the weapon because uh, most of the time I, I rarely ever light attack while I'm on my back bar. So, I mean, I just, I don't even bother changing the enchant. There's just really no point. Um, now for the shield, I run a reinforced shield. I just... I haven't trait changed it to Nernhone. Uh, Nernhone would essentially be the best, uh, but Reinforced is fine for me. I don't need anything over Reinforced. Um, now, uh, also, for those of you guys who don't have a Nernhone shield researched, um, you can get a Reinforced training shield that's named. Uh, you have, uh, there's multiples. Um, you have the two that. I, I mainly know about uh, I know there's a there's one more in pin one I forget the name of it but um, so it's gonna be Targoth's shield that's gonna be one reinforced shield and then the other one is going to be the broadhead shield um, which is also comes in reinforced okay um, and that's also a training shield so um, if you have issues you know finding something that's not training uh, these are these are some additional options for you and the King's guard hammer comes in decisive as it is uh, So you can always just go ahead and get that without the need of trait changing as well um, So let's go ahead and dive into skills what we're running for skills uh, So my skill bar has changed up a little bit with this patch change. Uh, I am running whip uh, It's got a really nice tool tip a 9902 um, if you add that extra damage glyph, it's going to be over 10,000 uh, damage on the whip tooltip. Uh, now, if you get a continuous attack buff, it is at over 10k. Uh, so, with a continuous attack. Um, as well as when we go into stats, I'll go ahead and show you as well uh, what our resource regeneration is looking like as well. And then also inform you as to what it will be with continuous attack as well. Um, so our burning embers is a really, really nice dot. It's doing 1600 damage a second as well as 5000 damage on the initial hit. Um, I switched to engulfing flames now that it's been fixed this patch for all of you who uh, weren't familiar with this, but World in Ruin was not buffing engulfing flames originally um, or doo doo breath for Stam DK. Um, so now that has changed, uh, it was in the patch notes that it is actually buffing it. Um, so, and the damage is definitely noticeable, so you can actually see that. Um, so, and the other thing that I realized as well was that buff was also affecting the dot. Um, so, seeing as how the dot itself, if you notice before, uh, was hitting for maybe 900, it was really, really low. Um, but since this is a AoE damage, then the dot is also going to be affected by World and Ruin as well. Um, so, that was something I noticed uh, between last patch and this patch because on the same build, with this patch, I have recorded uh, footage, and the dot was right around like 1,000, 1,000 ish, and we had about we had right at the same amount of damage that I'm achieving right now. 
Um, so that is noticeable. It is a 6% increase, uh, so it's definitely something to think about. Um, getting a 16% increase on this damage, um, as well as a 10% increase, is making this dot hit pretty hard now, this patch. Um, I took Talons off. Uh, the way I feel about Talons, I know a lot of people are asking me why I'm not running Talons. Um, currently, I just feel like it costs too much and does way too little. Um, so I wanna run maximum damage. Um, especially with the play style I've been, the way I've been playing lately, um, I've been doing a lot more running and things like that. Uh, so since that is the case, I really enjoy having the engulfing flames instead of talons. Cause I mean, guys, let's just be real. Talons cost a lot of magicka and it's just the benefit of it. And then so many people running wings, so many people running forward momentum. Um, I mean, it's the, it, you know, and then with the dodge roll, you know, with the immov with the immovable uh, the immovability um, immunity as well, uh, it's just it's not worth running talons. I would suggest taking it off your bar if you are. Um, and I mean, honestly, fossilize is enough. I mean, as long as you just hit them with that fossilize every time their immunity to immovabilities is down, uh, you're, you're going to get a fossilize and you'll get a whip proc every time. So, uh, I would just suggest doing that, you know, while they have immunity, just make sure you're applying this and, um, burning embers if you can, uh, from what my understanding is, there are talks of buffing the distance on whip burning embers and fossilize next patch to the same distance as engulfing flames. Um, so that'll be a really good buff for us next patch. I would just suggest going ahead and getting used to this 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 uh, skill setup on the front bar. It is really effective, um, and it does quite a bit of damage. So I would just suggest trying to get used to this setup on the front bar if you can. Uh, now, as for my front bar, I always run inner light, guys. I have ran talons and engulfing flames, and I'm just going to be honest with you. The amount of damage that you get from Mage Light is just, it's so much, okay? Um, you're getting a 5% increase, plus I believe it's a 2% increase based off of how many Mage, you know, abilities we have on our front bar. So, yep, 2%. Um, so, we're getting a Max Magicka and a Magicka Recovery buff, which Magicka Recovery buff is kind of whatever, but the Max Magicka increase is really nice. So, since this is giving us 5%, with this passive, we're getting a 7% increase on the front bar. Um, if you want increased damage, you can change this from Ferocious Leap over to Meteor. Uh, I prefer to run standard on my back bar. That's just how I prefer to play. I know a lot of people um, like to run Ferocious Leap on their back bar and on and uh, run Meteor on their front bar because Ferocious Leap really is also good at being a defensive ultimate. Um, so you can definitely run that. I've switched back and forth between the two, uh, but Meteor will definitely give you increased damage on the front bar. So if we look at that, it's going to raise our max Magicka up uh, to 38k. Um, so if we go back and then we put Leap back on the front bar, we'll go ahead and see the difference in max Magicka. So the difference in max Magicka, we're at 376 so um, it's a small increase, but it's definitely noticeable. You, you will increase your spell damage and the amount of damage that you're hitting for by running Meteor on your front bar. So that's just a little min-max tactic. If you want to run that, it definitely works. Um, if you want to see the difference in damage, so we got 9902 on the Flame Lash currently. If we go ahead and we put Meteor on the front bar, that's going to put that at... I guess it's not showing us the change in damage, but there is there will be an increase in damage because you are increasing your mass magicka, so there will be an increase in damage. I don't know why it's not updating. There we go, it updated. Um, so now, if you look at the tooltip, it's right under 10k. So it's about a it's about a 90 damage increase on the whip tooltip. Um, so that's just some min max. If you want to go that route, you're definitely welcome to. Um, personally, I don't think it's worth not having leap on my front bar. I just I like to have leap. It, gives me like having it on my front bar where I'm at 80% of the time. Um, it's just nice to have access to that engagement as well as being able to smack somebody really quick. Um, now, since we're running rattle cage, I was trying to find abilities to fill in this slot where we used to run misform because I'm no longer vampire. So 
Where I was running Misform, I now went ahead and went to Empowering Chains. Um, the Major Expedition for six seconds is really nice, and having that gap closer on the back bar, where we have a gap closer on the front bar, but being able to achieve that back that that gap closer on the back bar is actually really really nice. Um, so. I would suggest that if you're running rattle cage instead of putting like igneous shield here some stupid garbage um go ahead and just run empowering chains it, it it's it's fucking nice okay it's really nice um now for our back bar we're going to be running coagulating blood uh reflective plate guys if you're not running this uh you need to it's it's super super nice um you gain immunity to two you know, for two seconds to immobilizations and snares, uh, as well as reflecting four projectiles for six seconds. Just super, super nice. I would suggest running that if you're not. Um, volatile armor, guys, if you're not running volatile armor, I've had people asking me what I thought about Mighty Chudan. Mighty Chudan is not a set for DK. Uh, maybe a one piece is fine, but uh, volatile armor you need to run, okay? Um, and the reason why that is, is because if you come down to our draconic abilities right where our volatile armor is at okay um and we look at elder dragon uh, i'm sorry not elder where is it right here um if you look at burning heart while we have a draconic ability active we're increasing our healing received by 12 percent. guys this is like one of the best passives in the game um so volatile armor is what gives dk massive healing okay um so you need to have volatile armor up all the time. Um, this is not a good enough, uh, what do you call it? Um, I guess you could say alternative to having volatile armor and then running, you know, uh, mighty Chudan. And the reason why that is, is because they reduced the cost of volatile armor anyways, uh, I believe two patches ago. So there's no reason not to run it. It only costs 2k. It doesn't cost shit. Um, if you're running through reduced cost glyphs, so I mean just run it. It's it's a great ability You should you should run it. It's it's literally one of the best abilities that you can run um, as well as on a mag DK It's going to be giving you uh, Constant damage return. Um, so while you have volatile armor active Okay, and if you're on the front bar while we have volatile armor active and we're on the front bar Let's so uh, let's take a look at that. That's going to increase the damage it's returning by 1645. Okay, um, as well as it's going to apply a nice dot. Okay, so while we're on the back bar, uh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and switch to back bar. The dot that we're going to be putting on people is going to be 9792. There's no reason not to run volatile armor. It's going to give you an additional dot. Plus, while they're trying to apply pressure to you with um, direct damage abilities, you're going to be applying damage. So every light attack every ability that's direct damage um you're gonna be applying just passive damage just by having volatile armor it's it's just there's no reason not to run that um and so we already went over empowering chains now cauterize i mean hands down cauterize is just too good not to run like if we go to front bar i mean we're getting hit with 6k heals from cauterize now i am in cyrodiil so you are seeing you know the difference even with uh, battle spirit so i mean we're getting hit with these really really nice heals um so there's no reason not to run it uh and like i said i run standard on my back bar um i really like standard if somebody activates the shackle synergy it hits for 10k uh there's nothing in the game that hits harder than that that's a fucking huge that's a huge synergy um, as well as implies an immovability, uh, which then allows you when somebody dodge rolls to just go ahead and hit them with fossilize. So um, you're just burning a bunch of stam uh, by doing so. Um, on top of that, it's going to give you a really nice dot of over 3k a second while they're in it. And it also increases your damage and reduces the amount of damage that you're taking by 15%. Um, so in my opinion, it's literally the best ultimate in the game. Uh, I don't think there's a better ultimate than standard of might uh the only drawback to it is it does cost quite a bit um but when you're in a tower and you drop this and you have a group in a tower it's it's very devastating so i would definitely suggest uh considering running that now let's go ahead and look at stats uh so here's our back bar stats unbuffed so we got 36.6k max magica 28.3k health with 14.7k stam our magica recovery is 96 or 966 health recovery is 943 and stamina 720 um, as well as our spell damage on the back bar is 2307 
and our spell crit is 32% on both front and back bar. Our spell resistance is going to be 2306 unbuffed and 19.3 unbuffed as well. Physical, let's go ahead and buff up real quick. Boom, buffed. We are looking at 28k spell or spell resist with 24.6 physical resistance as well. Now let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and switch to front bar. So looking at front bar, let me buff up one more time. Front bar, we'll go over resistances first. Uh, we have 24.7 and 21 K physical, and that's going to be because we are running dual wield front bar. Our spell damage is 2832 with a 32% spell critical, as said before. 37.6 max magicka with 982 magicka recovery, 877 health recovery, and 720 stamina recovery uh, with 14.7 stamina. Now, for buffs that are up at all times, we have major sorcery buff up at all times because of rattle cage. Um, we do have the boon of the apprentice that's going to give us an additional 238 spell damage um i prefer this over having a a, a uh enchant uh a i'm sorry a spell damage enchant on jewelry um so i would suggest taking this over the uh atra the atro stone uh and the reason why i would suggest this over the atro stone is because essentially it's just it's just better uh you're going to get more spell damage now if you if you are finding yourself having trouble sustaining then by all means you can go ahead and run the atro and then switch one you know over to one damage uh, damage glyph on the jewelry uh essentially it's going to be close to the same amount of damage it's just going to give you a little bit more sustain so that way it'll help out your sustain a little bit um, now we are running the Clockwork Citrus Filet. That's going to increase our health and Magicka by 3724. I'm sorry, our health by 3724 and increase our health recovery by 351. It's going to increase our Max Magicka by 3458 and increase our Magicka recovery by 319. So that is why I think the Trainee is the best uh, sustain set that you can get and the reason why I say that is because technically it's not a sustain set um, but it is allowing you to get sustain and additional health recovery uh, we are not a vampire guys if you're a vampire currently is patch get rid of it vampire sucks and um, the only reason why we were running it previously was for uh, misform that's literally it um, now that we have the wings giving us immunity um, as well as uh, if you want to run forward momentum and you're getting away from needing mist form, uh, that's just going to be your best bet. So anyways, that's the build guys. Um, actually before I get off here, we need to go ahead and go over CP cause it has changed. All right. So CP, how I'm running my CP, we have 43 into blessed 56 in elf born and 43 elemental expert as well as six in spell erosion. So let me go ahead and explain why this is set up that way. Uh, we want 20% Elfborn because that's going to increase our crit and crit heals. Okay, crit damage and heals. Um, Elemental Expert. I run 43 in here because I like my flat basis to be a 10% on anything that's only going to get a buff of 15. Um, I feel like going anything over that is just using way too many points when you can use them somewhere else. Um, six points in a Spell Erosion just for a little bit of extra spell penetration. Um... I mean, if you want to find a better use for those six points, you can. Bless, 10%. I like more healing versus more spell pin. Because um, if I'm fighting a guy that I need a shitload of spell pin, I should probably just walk away from that fight anyways. All right, Master at Arms. I'm running 56 points in Master at Arms. The thing with DK is you need... You want you need 20% increased direct damage as well as 20% increased dot damage um, because half of your damage is dots, the other half of your damage is direct. So um, you need to think about that when putting out your CP. So we're running 56 in the Master at Arms and 56 in the Thalmaturge. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, we have 51 points in the Ironclad for a flat 19% uh, damage mitigation against direct damage abilities as well as 24 points into critical resist. That's going to give us right at 700. I believe my math came out to, uh, I think it was a 5% reduction in crit damage at 700. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. If, I rem if I'm remembering correctly. Um, anyway, so I did some testing and, and my math came out to so that's that's what needs to be in critical resist. So that's why we have a flat 700 at 24. 
Okay, so moving on, we have 51 points into Thick Skinned, as well as 43 points in a Hardy and 43 points in Elemental Defender. That's going to be both of these are going to be a 10% uh, flat mitigation and a 19% flat mitigation on Thick Skinned, as well as I'm running five points in Expert Defender to get a, a 3% reduction on light and heavy attacks as well as um, I'm running 43 points in a quick recovery because, like I said before, I really, really like uh, healing. Um, so now, with quick recovery, this is going to be your... This is absolutely, hands down, the best healing CP tree or CP there is. Um, so you always want to make sure you have at least... 10% in this. Um, if you want to run less points in a blessed, you can, um, but 43 points in a quick recovery is extremely important. So that's going to increase all healing coming in, okay? Quick recovery is all healing that's coming in. The healing you're doing yourself, the healing you're getting from other people, blah, 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 okay? Now, moving on over here, we have 56 points in a Warlord with 5 points in a Sprinter because I do sprint a lot. Uh, we want 120 in the lover because we do want wind running, okay? This is going to increase our Magicka and health recovery diet by 10% while sprinting. So, it is very noticeable. You want that, run it. Um, 56 points in Arcanist with 32 in healthy and 32 in the moon calf. Um, the reason why I have this split that way is because this was the best way to get a flat split that I could find um, and achieve the most recoveries that I possibly could without having to put additional unused points basically in my CP. So moving on, I am running 23 points into tumbling. This is going to give us a 10% dodge roll reduction. Um, I don't really dodge roll much. There's no need to. Um, I run 56 points in Shadow Ward because when I'm on my back bar, uh, I block a lot. Um, if when I'm Anytime I'm rebuffing, I'm holding block. Okay, because I want as little damage coming in while I'm rebuffing. Um, so that way I can just switch to my front bar and just start going ham. So that's the CP. Uh, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the build. This is going to be the remastered version of the trainer build. So um, it's basically my trainer build just redone for the, uh, the I guess, what is this? The moon, I, I forget the name of the patch. Who gives a shit? Anyways, uh, it's it's just it's the revamp build for this patch. Okay, so oh, uh, here we go. We are. Let me see. Let me check the name for you. So that way we don't have. There's no questions. I have somebody going. What patch was this for? Uh, let's see. Okay. Blah 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 blah. Moon Hunter. Okay. So this is gonna be the revamp version for the Moon Hunter patch. All right, guys. Well, you guys have fun out there with the trainer build, um, and I will be releasing two more builds this patch, so you guys know what JD's running out there on the battlefield. As always, I will see you guys out there on the battlefield. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.